Hello there, my name is Sarah Harnish. I'm a Platinum Leader on the Oil Ability Team, a certified aromatherapist. I've been a news anchor for 18 years. The Oil Ability Team is a Young Living Oils team that started in upstate New York a little over two years ago and now has 3,000 members in 50 states and seven countries. We're focused on education and making sure that you know how to use these amazing tools that the Lord has given us. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the new audio format of our 101 lecture, which is a ground-up essential oils course covering over 50 years of aromatherapy in 45 minutes. I hold six aromatherapy certifications, including raindrop, emotional release, and biblical aromatherapy, and I love to teach people how to live a chemical-free lifestyle. Let's start at the very beginning. I first got my Young Living Starter Kit in 2014, and within a week, saw over 80 benefits to my family. We use oils in place of chemical cleaning supplies in our home. We replaced every single thing under our sink with one bottle of Thieves Cleaner. I use oils in place of supplements because an oil-infused vitamin has more benefits than a supplement without oils in it. I use oils in diffusers around the house for emotions and stress and to calm my family down. I use them to get rid of smells. I use them in my personal care products like toothpaste and shampoo and deodorant. Oils are in just about every nook and cranny in my home. Every oil that you use is a chemical that you're not using. In this lecture, we're going to hit on the big topics that you need to know to start using oils effectively. Effectively, and the rest of it you'll learn as you go by looking it up and utilizing some of the great studies that have been done on oils in the past five years. We'll talk a little bit about what oils are, some on their history, oil purity, and why that is so critical, how oils are made, how they hit the body, safety, and then I'll tell you where to start if you want to get oils in your home. I do want you to know I'm not out to sell you anything. I am out to get as many people off chemicals as I can. I was a migraine sufferer for 24 years, having brain bleeds every single month and stroke-like symptoms, tremoring, facial paralysis, all of it because of my exposure to things in my environment and what I was putting inside my body. I healed my migraines before I encountered oils, but I became a very good label reader because I know the source of how my headaches began, and I don't want anything in my house that I can't pronounce. So let's learn about essential oils together from the comfort of your car or your home. And if you want to continue learning, this is just one of over a dozen lectures that I've recorded on DVD or audio CD. I've also written a book called Game Plan that shows you how to get your oils for free. You can find all of that at oilabilityteam.com. Let's start at the very beginning, which is what are essential oils? They're the most powerful part of the plant, the lifeblood of the plant. Just like your blood clots your cuts and oxygenates your cells and detoxes the body, oils do the same thing for the plant. They're distilled from shrubs, flowers, trees, roots, bushes, fruit, rinds, resins, herbs. Oils consist of over 100 different natural organic compounds. Scientists found that a banana has 17 different naturally occurring chemicals that are really hard to pronounce. And those are the parts of the plants that in change. They're the movers and shakers in the plant that photosynthesize, work through trauma, energize, and they can do similar things in the human body. In humans, oils can provide support for every system in the body, your skeletal system, they support your muscular system, they support brain health, they support your circulatory system and your endocrine system and your hormones, they can help to support a healthy weight, they support your entire respiratory system and they aid your immune system to support you when you're surrounded by sickies. Oils can support every organ in your body, your liver, kidneys, heart, excretory system, your colon. They're used extensively for emotions and grounding and for spiritual support in your prayer life. I call frankincense my squirrel oil. (laughs) So I'm one of those people that loves to start praying. And then all of a sudden I think about the dinner that I haven't made yet and wondering what my children are doing. And and so when I put frankincense in in the diffuser, it just helps me to focus. I lean over it and start to pray and I'm able to hone in on the things that I really want to talk to the Lord about. An oil in a diffuser can soothe the tough day at school for a child or provide a calming effect when you've had a stressful day at work. Oils are used as, as an alternative to toxic chemicals in the home. You can literally use Thieves Cleaner in place of 409, Windex, Pine Sol, and bleach, and start swapping out every single chemical cleaning toxin in your home to live a purer lifestyle without breaking the bank. Oils enter and leave the body medicinally and cosmetically, and they leave no trace behind. There are about 300 different oils on the earth, but you only need 10 to 20 to build a really good kit for yourself at home. And you don't have to be an aromatherapist to know how to use them. In most cases, you're just rubbing it topically on the skin. There are three main ways to get oils into your system. The English, apply it topically, which is to rub it directly on the skin. The French, ingest and cook with it, which is probably the most controversial thing in the entire world of essential oils, and we will talk about that in this lecture. 
manufacture. And then the Germans diffuse and inhale it, which is the most effective method because it doesn't have to pass through the digestive system. So how do oils enter and how long do they last? Well, tests have shown that oils hit the heart, liver, and thyroid in three seconds when they were inhaled, and they're found in the bloodstream in 26 seconds when they were applied topically. Expulsion of essential oils takes three to six hours in a normal, healthy body and 14 hours if you're unwell. So your body will actually hold on to that oil a little bit longer if it knows that you need it. Some history on oils. Well, they were first mentioned by name in the biblical book of Genesis when Joseph was sold to the slave traders in chapter 37. They carried cedarwood, sandalwood, and myrrh, spicery, and balm with them. Genesis ends with the burial of Joseph's father who was anointed with myrrh essential oil. So when people come to me and say, I can't use oils because it's not biblical, I laugh because I think to myself, goodness, they're mentioned over 1,100 times in Scripture. 70% of the books of the Bible make mention of essential oils. So you have to jump over huge swaths of the word to be able to avoid um, the mention of essential oils. They've also found records of one of the oldest cultures on the earth, the Babylonians, placing orders for cedarwood, myrrh, and cypress. The ancient Greeks believed that when they died, they went to Elysium, where the air was permanently filled with essential oils. The Egyptians used oils for beauty and embalming, Pakistan and Rome for communal bathhouses. The Egyptians had the oldest recorded deodorant recipe made with essential oils. Egypt got many of their oils from China and India, and there is evidence that they were used there for a thousand years before the pharaohs. They were used by the medieval Europeans. Many brought oils back during the Crusades, and they were used by Christ. Jesus was given gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Frankincense, nicknamed the coconut oil of essential oils because it has over 10,000 uses just for that one oil. Jesus' own name, Messiah, means the anointed one, which was a direct reference to the use of essential oils in scripture. Because of their size, molecularly, they're smaller than cells, and they're even smaller than viruses. Oils can penetrate your skin more swiftly than any modern medicine on the planet. According to a study by MD Jean Volney, essential oils can affect every cell in the body within 20 minutes, and then they're metabolized like other nutrients. So do oils work? This is probably the number one question that I get as an aromatherapist. And I will tell you, I've been using oils now for about eight years. Uh, Lavender smelled very nice in my bath, but it never had a significant effect on my body. And I was buying my lavender online for $4 a bottle for a huge 20-ounce bottle of it. I get my oils at farmer's markets, at bulk food stores, on Amazon. Uh, I bought it just about everywhere. I want you to know that there is no rating system in the United States for essential oils. The closest that we get is an FDA requirement that there has to be 5% essential oil in the bottle to label it pure, therapeutic grade, or organic. Only 5%. That means the other 95% can be carriers, chemical extenders, solvents. It can be garbage. And that's totally legal under U.S. law. It actually really frustrates me as an aromatherapist because I know as a mom, I can go into a grocery store and flip over a box of cereal and I can see the nutrition facts on the side of the box. But if you flip over bottles of oil in the United States, there is no nutrition facts. You don't know that there's other things in that oil outside of the oil itself. So you have to go with integrity and you've got to trust the company that you're working with. And so the only company that I use um, is Young Living because they've built a reputation of integrity. I've been to just about every single U.S. farm and I love I love the transparency of the company. I love that they um, are totally transparent about their oils. You can fly to any of their farms, open any door, interview any employee, ask any questions that you want, and walk out into their fields and breathe it in and watch the entire process from seed to seal. The process that they have of of harvesting and distilling these oils at the right temperature. When Young Living comes in um, and they're going to put a crop into the ground, that that land has to be totally virgin land, never touched before by chemicals. Um, Then they put an heirloom crop into the ground. As it grows, they don't use any weed killers, no pesticides, nothing. A matter of fact, if you go to the farm, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to get you're going to get asked to hand weed because everything is hand weeded. Then when it's getting close to harvest time, they don't know exactly when that crop has to come in to be harvested. And so they will send their scientists out into the field every single hour on many of the farms to micro distill and see if that crop has reached, reached its peak value. If it's the very, very, very best that that plant can possibly be. 
community. And mom and pop shops can't do that. They just don't have the staffing to send people out every single hour around the clock for weeks to be able to see if their crop is at the very, very peak of its value. Then they bring that crop in. It's all hands on deck. And uh, and they distill it at the perfect temperature, the right temperature. Why does that matter so much? Well, let's uh, talk about cypress for a moment. If you distill cypress at the right temperature, it's got 288 naturally occurring chemical compounds that enact change in the human body. If you warm that up 10 degrees too warm when you're distilling or 10 degrees too cool, it's got 11. So it's so important that it's distilled at the right temperature. And that's where most oils companies make their biggest mistake is in the distillation process. They're trying to save a few pennies here and there um, on their oils. And so they'll use chemical solvents uh, to distill or they may dilute it with a carrier. When you're getting Young Living Oil, you're getting pure essential oil. There's nothing else in that bottle. No yuck, no chemicals. Um, It comes straight from the farm, straight to you. And that's one of the things that I love so much about Young Living as a company. If you look out over all of the oils on the earth, every single oil that's made falls into one of four different categories, grade A, grade B, grade C, or grade D. Grade A is therapeutic medicinal, which means it's made from organically grown plants and distilled at low temperatures. If you heat that oil up, you're going to destroy it. You're going to break it down, and then it's not going to have the same effect on the human body. Grade B oils are food grade, but they can contain synthetics, pesticides, fertilizers, chemical extenders, or carrier oils. I've had moms come up to me and say, Sarah, why on earth would they spray a field with fertilizer? I don't understand. Why would they use a chemical extender or or pesticide on an essential oils field? And and I tell them, well, they do it to your food. (laughs) If you go into the grocery store, unless you're buying everything organic, you're getting food that has been sprayed. And we know it's in that that spray. Many of those sprays can cause cancer in the human body. It's very, very dangerous. But the difference is if you're eating a food, say you're eating an apple, and it's been sprayed um, by a pesticide, you're getting a little bit of pesticide in your body. When you're using an essential oil, it takes 60,000 rose blossoms to make just one ounce of rose oil. So when you're using an essential oil, Uh, It's like eating the entire apple tree sprayed with pesticide instead of just that one little apple. It's why you want to make sure that your oils are pure and that they haven't been sprayed. Uh, The big reason comes down to one word, concentration. Okay, it's it's the concentration of those oils versus the food that you're eating. It's a completely different ballgame when we're talking essential oils. And that's why Young Living has a chemical-free policy. I call it the no yuck, <laughs> the no yuck promise. There's no yuck in their oils. All their oils are grade A. Grade C oils are perfume oils that often contain adulterating chemicals. And they usually use solvents like hexane to get a higher yield of oil per harvest. Hexane has been banned in many countries around the world, but it's not banned in the United States. Uh, hexane is one of the solvents that, that is directly linked to cancer. And it's what it's in a lot of store-bought oils. So if you open up an oil and you smell it and it's got that alcohol smell to it, there's a good chance that it was distilled using a solvent because they need the alcohols to be able to distill um, when they're using solvents. They're also typically diluted, grade C oils, with 80 to 95% alcohol. I've known people that have actually gotten tipsy using essential oils that are cheap because of the dilution rates with alcohol. It's just not good for you to use. Then there's grade D oils, and those are floral water, which are aromatic only, and they're usually a byproduct of grade A distillation. So you have this amazing company like Young Living that will come in with this beautiful heirloom crop distilled at the right temperatures, no chemicals in the ground, all hand weeded, and they bring it in at the peak of its uh, value and and they pull all the oil out of it. And then what's left is the garbage. It's the trash water, the floral water. There's nothing in there that is going to do something for the human body. And they will take that floral water and they'll sell it to other companies that will put 5% floral water in a bottle, fill it with a carrot and then label it as therapeutic grade or organic or pure or all natural. And it's a totally different oil, completely different oil from what you would get in a grade A oil. They're not even comparable. It's like comparing apples to oranges. That's what you're getting a lot of the time when you're buying those large bottles of essential oils offline. Because to sell a bottle of lavender, uh, a 20-ounce bottle of lavender, a pure lavender, it'd be, goodness, thousands and thousands of dollars. You wouldn't be able to afford it if it was the pure stuff. Grade A is the only true pure oil. It'd be like walking into your fridge, taking a glass of orange juice and diluting it 95% before you drink it. It wouldn't have the full benefits of 
love orange juice. I have had so many people come up to me and say, Sarah, does it really matter? Is it that big of a deal? You know, if I'm going to take an oil internally, okay, I'll use Young Living. But if I'm going to diffuse it and I just want a nice smell in my home, is it that big of a deal? And my answer is yes. I don't want any amount of pesticide at that concentration level in my home or chemical extender or carrier. It's so important that you know the source of where your oils are coming from. All right. That's why you want grade A oils. Before you purchase, you need to check to see if the company grows their own plants and owns their own fields and controls the entire process from seed to seal from the farm to the bottle because pesticides and pollution and previously farmed land, all of that can affect the quality of an essential oil. So why do oils companies sell oils more cheaply? To save money. If you spray your crop with pesticide, you've got more crop to distill. If you use a solvent to extract that oil, you pull more oil out. If you dilute it with a cheaper oil or with a carrier, you stretch that oil that you've distilled. So oils are sold more cheaply because companies cut corners. So many people that I've spoken with cannot wrap their minds around the concept that all oils are not made equally. And my response to that is, well, all food isn't made equally. You know that if you go to a grocery store and you get 80-20 irradiated rib meat, it's not the same as pasture grass-fed beef. It's just not the same product. And it's exactly the same thing with essential oils. You want to make sure that you trust the company that you're working with. And that is why I use Young Living. So how are oils made? Well, it takes a great deal of work to make just a tiny amount of essential oil. 60,000 rose blossoms to produce one ounce of rose oil. Lavender is abundant. 220 pounds provides seven pounds of oil. Jasmine flowers have to be picked by hand before the sun becomes hot on the very first day that they open, making it one of the most expensive oils in the world. It takes 8 million hand-picked blossoms to produce 2.2 pounds of oil. A sandalwood tree has to be 30 years old and 30 feet high before it can be cut down to be distilled. But a little bit goes a long way. Most oils are 10 to $30 a bottle. A 5 milliliter bottle, which is what comes in a Young Living starter kit, has about 90 drops in it. A 15 milliliter bottle has 250 drops. Each application is 1 to 3 drops, meaning even a small bottle will get you 45 to 90 applications. Thieves Cleaner is organic, and it costs about $1.50 a bottle to make, and you can't even get that in the organic section at the grocery store. That replaces 409, Windex, Pine Salt, and all the organic versions of those those different chemicals, those will run you 4 to $6 a bottle if you're getting the organic cleaners. Most oils average 6 to 15 cents a drop, which is how you use them. It's by the drop, not by the bottle. If you want to learn about how to get your oils for free, I've written a book that I mentioned earlier in this lecture called Game Plan, and it would be an honor to have you pick that up. You can get that on my website at oilabilityteam.com. So how do oils work when they hit the body? Well, when a fragrance is inhaled, those odor molecules will travel up your nose where they get trapped by olfactory membranes that are well protected by the lining of the nose. And each molecule fits like a puzzle piece into a specific cell receptor site that's lining the membrane in the epithelial lining of the nose. Each of those nerve cells are replaced by your body every 28 days. So if oils are so powerful, can they damage your skin cells? Well, no, because the Lord knew what he was doing when he designed your body and the cells that touch the oils are constantly shed. When stimulated, the nerve cells will trigger electrical impulses to the gustatory center of the human brain where the sensation of taste is perceived and the amygdala where emotions are stored in that limbic lobe of the brain. Because the limbic system is directly connected to parts of the brain that control your heart rate and your blood pressure and your breathing and your memory and your stress levels and your hormones, essential oils can have a profound physical, physiological, and psychological effect on the human body. The sense of smell is the only one of the five senses connected directly to that limbic lobe lobe of the brain, the emotional control center. So it explains why some fragrances evoke memories and emotions before we're even consciously aware. So are essential oils safe? Well, there are certain oils that are photosensitive, meaning that you don't want to wear them and go outside. Mostly citruses like grapefruit and lemon and bergamot. Be careful. Don't put them outside and then go garden for three or four hours because you're going to have your skin blister up and it'll be very uncomfortable. I tell everyone to test all the oils first to see how your body responds to them. The first time that you use them, you want to use a carrier oil first. So there's two different types of oils on the face of the earth. There are fatty oils and then there's essential oils. Fatty oils are oils like coconut coconut oil or jojoba, which is a very good skin oil, or olive oil, those aren't the same things as essential oils. Essential oils are very, very tiny molecularly, and fatty oils are very large molecularly. So if you ever put an essential oil on your skin and you get a little bit of redness or you get a little bit of a burning sensation, what you want to do is you want to use a carrier oil, one of those fatty oils like olive oil, to slow down the absorption rate in your body so your body can't draw it in quite as quickly as it wants to, which is what's causing that redness on your skin. 
As a matter of purpose, I just always dilute oils when I'm working with children because their skin's more permeable and it absorbs the oil more quickly. My favorite place to put oils on kids is on their feet. That's a very, very gentle place. The skin's a little tougher down there. There are some oils that you may not want to diffuse because they're just really strong, like cinnamon or oregano. Oregano in a diffuser is like 100 pizzas up your nose. <laughs> it's very, very, very strong. Be wary of putting the oils topically near your eyes or any membrane part of the human body inside your ear, um, in your private areas. You don't want to put oils in those places because they're just not made to tolerate oils. Some oils like peppermint can cause a burning sensation. And I'll tell you, I'm the first person that uh, <laughs> even as an aromatherapist that will be working with peppermint, get it on my fingers. And then I always stick my finger in my eye, rub my eye, and I'm walking around with one eye. I'm one-eyed Sarah. So some oils like peppermint can cause a burning sensation. So if you're placing an oil near your eye, you want to apply oil to a Q-tip or a toothpick instead of tipping that bottle toward your eye. You don't ever want to put the oil right in your eye. You can also become desensitized to an oil if you're using the same one day after day after day. So I rotate my oils out every three or four days. Now, what about internal use of essential oils? Naha, which is one of the top aromatherapy bodies in the United States, does not advocate for internal use. Why? Well, because about 95% of all essential oils companies are not safe for eternal use. We talked about um, internal use. We talked about um, the quality of the oil and the pesticides and the fertilizers and all the yuck that will be in, in many essential oils that are out there. And you don't want to be taking those internally. Also, they're not food grade. They're not grass certified by the FDA. Grass certified is, is a certification generally regarded as safe. And Young Living has an entire line out called Vitality Oils that are grass certified by the FDA. When you're making recommendations among all oils companies, you've got to make broad, sweeping statements. Naha also bases a lot of their decisions on the British model, which advocates for topical use only. And a lot of those British studies, if you go back to the source studies, they're flawed. They're done in extremely high doses or in ways that the oils aren't used, like pouring an entire bottle inside the human body. Uh, Young Living utilizes all three methods, British, French, and German. And the French have been using essential oils safely internally for decades. Now, on the flip side, if you look at the ingredients list of what you have in your bathroom or your kitchen, we put things every single day on our skin and into our bodies that contain damaging chemicals. The average woman applies over 300 chemicals a day to her body just through four things, soap, makeup, shampoo, and hair care. 80 of those chemicals are before breakfast. Essential oils have one ingredient. It's just lemon. It's just tangerine. It's just sage. It's just cinnamon. There's nothing else in the bottle but distilled plants. According to the National Poison Control Center, there were zero deaths from essential oils in 2014 in the United States. So when people come to me and ask if the oils are safe, my answer is yes. They're very, very, very safe. Make sure you're not using photosensitive oils outside. Make sure you're not putting them into your eye and using common sense when you're putting them on children. But I would still pick an essential oil over a chemical in a heartbeat in my home. So if you want to get some of these into your house and you're not really sure where to begin, you're a little bit overwhelmed, I would recommend the premium starter kit with the home diffuser from Young Living site. And you can get that by going to youngliving.com. Click on become a member and it's going to have a line there to enter in the sponsor and the enroller number. I want you to enter in the number of the person who gave you this class, whether it came to you via oilabilityteam.com and you're listening to it in a podcast version or whether it's a CD that someone has burned and put into your hands for you to listen to, find that person who poured into you and thank them by using their number for sponsor and enroller and pouring into their family business. So what comes in a Young Living Starter Kit? Well, you get a diffuser, and you're going to get 11 different bottles of essential oils, full bottles. These aren't sample bottles. It's incredible. The diffuser and the two bottles of oil alone are worth the value of the entire kit. As a frugal mom, this truly is a good purchase. It's the only thing on Young Living's site that's half off. So I don't recommend starting with one bottle. I recommend starting with a starter kit so that you've got the use of the diffuser, which is the number one way that I use oils in my home. So which oils come in that starter kit? Well, frankincense. It's one of the top skin oils. It helps to smooth the appearance of skin. It's a key ingredient in Young Living's Brain Power Oil. You can diffuse it during prayer time to help with grounding and purpose. And I always tell people, if you don't know what oil to put on it, put frankincense on and see what happens. Lavender, you can diffuse for a calming, soothing scent. You can unwind by adding a few drops of it to a nighttime bath. It is the oil of relaxation, also one of the top oils to support healthy skin. And it's called the Swiss Army Knife of essential oils for all of its uses. Peppermint supports the gastrointestinal system and promotes health 
healthy bowel function. If your gut is off, I would be using peppermint on it. It helps with enhanced healthy gut function and maintains the efficiency of the digestive tract, and it may help to support uh, performance during exercise. So if you're an athlete, if you are a runner, put some peppermint on on the back of your neck before you head out and see how you feel purification. You can diffuse that to freshen the air and to eliminate odors. I love to put it in my teenager's gym shoes. You can add it to a carrier and massage on the feet to soothe. Add it to a carrier to moisturize your skin. You can use it in a spray to enjoy an outdoor free uh, an annoyance free outdoor experience when you're outside. Thieves helps to support a healthy respiratory system. You can add a drop of it in hot drinks for a spicy zing, and it helps to maintain overall wellness when taken as a dietary supplement. That's one of the oils I love to put the Thieves Vitality um, in veggie caps and take that internally uh, to support my respiratory system and also to maintain overall wellness. Stress Away, my favorite oil in the kit. It's a mix of lime and vanilla. It smells so good. That's a, a wellness oil, and it's also maybe an important part of a daily health regimen. It's one of the top emotions oils. When your day is just off, open that bottle and take some deep breaths. Lemon oil enhances the flavor of foods in water. It's a key ingredient in Thieves and Ningxia Red. It's got a citrus flavor and it may help to support the immune system. It's one of my favorite oils for degreasing things. I love to stick it in the bottoms of my pans when I'm trying to get the gunk off. I can get greasy fingerprints off of my walls. I have four sons at home and a daughter and they love to muck up my walls. Pan away. A lot of people will get the kit just for this oil. A pan away you can apply after exercise to soothe your muscles. It's got a very stimulating aroma to it. Apply it to the back and the neck for soothing aromatic experience. Also supports the appearance of healthy skin coloration. Matter of fact, Young Living is out with a pain cream now, a cool azul pain cream designed specifically for aches and pains. And a lot of the oils in Panaway are included, peppermint, wintergreen included in that pain cream that they created. Copaiba promotes overall wellness. This is an oil you can only get from Young Living. Uh, supports nearly every system in the human body. It's a great skin oil. Digize is the top oil for supporting your digestive system. You can add two drops to water with a drop of peppermint for stimulating beverage. Take it in a veggie capsule internally and use along with every meal with essential zyme to support a wellness regimen. And then RC, again, another oil that some people buy the whole kit for just for this one. This supports a healthy respiratory system. You can diffuse it for a comforting aroma. It contains actually four different eucalyptuses. You can rub it on the feet and the chest and it encourages an atmosphere of comfort. So this might seem a little overwhelming to you. You just survived 27 minutes of me talking about essential oils. I learned all the stuff that I have studied um, from many, many, many different aromatherapy courses. Where do you start? Um, I mentioned just, just a moment ago, order the premium starter kit and get it in your hands and just play with it at home. Get over that learning curve of reaching for the oils instead of reaching for the toxic chemicals in your home. If you can wing it, put a $22 bottle of Thieves Cleaner on your order when you get the, the starter kit, you take one cap of that thieves cleaner and you put it in a spray bottle and it makes over 20 different spray bottles of cleaner. And that's what I use on my floors. It's what I wipe my counters down with in my bathroom. It's what I wipe my kitchen down with. I use it to spot clean my clothing and there's nothing in it but oils. It's clove and lemon and cinnamon and eucalyptus and rosemary. There's nothing in there that's going to hurt you. That's a much better choice than all the chemicals underneath your sink. So if you need a small, tiny baby steps, that would be the place that I would recommend and starting is just with cleaning supplies, swapping out your cleaning supplies. Let me get real with you for a moment as I wrap up this audio lecture and tell you the true reason that I teach so emphatically about this. Why does chemical-free living matter so much to a mom of five in rural upstate New York, living on a mountaintop, homeschooling? Why do you matter so much to me? Because I've seen the other end of a chemical-filled lifestyle, and I want everyone to know what they're putting in and on their bodies. The number two cause of death in the United States is cancer. 1,600 people die every single day from cancer. One in three cases in the U.S. are directly linked to a poor diet, physical inactivity, weight, or chemical exposure. The American Cancer Society says only 5 to 10 percent of all cancer cases are from gene defects. 5 to 10 percent. That means 90 to 95 five percent of cancer cases are under our control. It's what we allow into our homes. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health studied 2,983 ingredients in our products at home, and they found 884 toxic ingredients. 314 of those ingredients caused biological mutations. 218 caused reproductive issues. 778 were toxic to the human body. 146 of those ingredients they knew caused 
caused cancer tumors, but they were still allowed in the United States, even though they're banned in other countries around the world. Many of these chemicals are allowed in common cleaning supplies in the United States, things that may be in your cabinets right now. Even organic cleaners have some known carcinogens that are just naturally derived. 26 seconds after exposure, chemicals are found in measurable amounts in the human body. The average woman applies 300 chemicals to her body every single day. 80 of them are before breakfast. The top 10 most dangerous chemicals in our home include air fresheners like plug-ins or candles. Second on the list, chemical cleaning supplies like 409, Windex, Pine Sol, drain and oven cleaners and furniture polish, dishwasher soap and dish soap, beauty supplies and personal care products like hairspray, gel, shampoo and deodorant. Most deodorant has aluminum in it, and then we slather that on our lymph nodes for 70 years. Aluminum has been directly linked to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease in the United States. And the number one pollutant in the family home, laundry soap and fabric softener. You wash your clothes, it sits on your skin, it outgasses in your closet all night long. That information from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Top 10 Killer Household Chemical Study. There are 100,000 chemicals on the market today. The Toxic Substance Control Act of 1976 grandfathered them in. So what does that mean to you? Simply put, these chemicals have not had any safety testing, and we know very little about their side effects. Of the chemicals that were tested, toxic labeling is only required if 50% or more of the animals tested die. Under the TSCA, manufacturers are protected by secret trade laws that allow them to keep their ingredients list secret. Dr. Samuel Epstein, who's the chairman of the Cancer Prevention Coalition, says, quote, It is unthinkable that women would knowingly inflict such exposures on their infants and children and themselves if products were routinely labeled with explicit warnings of cancer risk, end quote. But they're not labeled. Since the 1940s, prostate cancer up 200 percent, thyroid cancer up 155 percent, brain cancer up 70 percent, and the American Cancer Society estimates a 50 percent rise in cancer rates by 2020. There's a standard set for non-industrial buildings by OSHA for chemical exposure. For formaldehyde, it's 0.75 ppm. That's not even 1%. The average home has an astonishing level of 50 ppb. That is 50 times what's allowed, but it's not regulated. Wipes that are requested on school shopping lists measure 1,798 ppb. 409 cleaning solution, 12,000 ppb. It is no wonder that the quality of air inside your home is 5 to 7 times more toxic than outdoor air quality. So what happens when your body is chemically overloaded? Well, you may see it as something as catastrophic as cancer, but most of us feel it in other ways. Lethargy, inability to focus, sleep trouble, chronic inflammation, unexplained pain, fibromyalgia, skin issues, adult acne, hormones, hot flashes, stress, anxiety, fear. If you face any of these issues, it is time to kick chemicals to the curb. You can control what you allow within the walls of your home. If you missed it at the beginning, my name is Sarah Harnish, and I'm a Young Living Platinum, and I wrote a book on my story that can show you how simple it is to get your oils for free. It's called Game Plan, and you can find that at oilabilityteam.com if you want to continue growing and learning. Young Living is an essential oils company based out of Utah. It's the largest essential oils company in the world and a pioneer in the art of distillation. Their methods have been copied all over the globe. They produce the most oils on the planet, and they do it right through their seed-to-seal process. If you want to learn more, I've recorded several lectures to DVD that explain the process. Why am I so passionate, though, about getting rid of chemicals? Well, let me take a moment and share my story with you. When I was 12 years old, I had my very first migraine headache, and I continued to have those for 24 years. I went through 13 neurologists, 16 different families of migraine medicines. Um, At my lowest of the low, I would have these things 10 days a month out of a 30-day month, and I would be tremoring and vomiting and would get into a cycle where I would get so dehydrated that I'd have to go into the ER every single month and get what they called a migraine cocktail intravenously, which is a a mix of three different medications. There's a pain medication, an anti-inflammatory, and an anti-nauseant to stop the cycle of throwing up, and they give it to you intravenously. And you're so drugged, by the time you leave, you have to have a ride home. Um, I went through that cycle 
for years and years and years and through neurologist after neurologist after neurologist. And eventually I was sent up to a very large headache clinic where they did weeks and weeks of testing and ran me through MRIs. And I started doing yearly MRIs. And what they were finding was the blood vessels were swelling um, and pressing against my skull and causing these little tiny pinprick brain bleeds every single time that I got these migraines. So I would have stroke-like symptoms each time that I got them. My face would droop. I'd have weakness on the right side of my body. And then when the migraine went away, the swelling went away, and I would get the feeling back on that side of my body. And it was a terrible existence, not to mention the pain that was so awful that it basically completely took away my ability to be a mom five to 10 days a month where I'm just grabbing my knees and writhing in pain, laying on my bed in a dark room and in a cycle of vomiting that I can't stop. I went up and I um, started doing these yearly MRIs and they were finding about 30 to 40 more spots of dead tissue on the surface of my brain every single year that I went in and they would compare the scans. And so uh, the last neurologist that I saw, he said, Sarah, I want to put you on six different migraine medications. I want you on an anti-nauseant, a pain medication. I want you an anti-inflammatory. I want you a steroid. And I want you on two other medications to counteract the side effect of the first four medications that I'm going to put you on. And I said, well, why don't you look for the cause of the migraines? Why don't you look for for what what's triggering these things instead of chasing all of the symptoms, instead of chasing the swelling and chasing the pain and chasing you know all of these pieces of the migraines, why don't we try to find out what is causing them? And he said, we have no way of knowing. People have looked for years and years and years to try to figure out migraines and nobody knows what causes them. So this is the best that we can offer you is to make you comfortable. So he sent me home with all of this medication and I lined it all up and I looked at it and the best that I can describe um, is I didn't have a piece on taking all of that. The steroid alone had two and a half pages of warnings, and most of them were heart warnings. And I was already born with a tricuspid regurgitation, so one of my large valves in my heart backflows, and I was born with a level five heart murmur, and uh, and that medication caused heart damage. And so I told my husband, I said, I feel like I'm choosing between a heart attack and a stroke. And he said, well, tell the neurologist that. So I did, and, and he said, Sarah, you are choosing between a heart attack or a stroke, but if it was me, I'd rather have the heart attack because you're just gone. He said, if you have a stroke, you'll be able to watch your kids grow up and you'll never be able to communicate with them and you won't be present as a mom. And to me, that would be worse. And I just walked away thinking to myself, why would you make that decision for me? And so I came home and I told my husband, I said, I'm going to try to to fix these things homeopathically. I want to cure my migraines homeopathically. I would love to tell you that oils were part of that journey, but they weren't. Um, this was before I got introduced to essential oils. And so I started doing searches, trying to find anybody out there who'd ever been cured of migraines. And I stumbled on a neurologist who had cured many, many people of migraines in her office because of their gut health, because she believed that the gut is linked to the head. And when you eat poorly, you puncture holes in your gut lining that doesn't allow it to process hormones and uh, and other things in the body correctly. And then it metastasizes in different ways. And for me, it was migraine headaches. And so I went on her diet, which was called the GAPS diet. And I cut sugar, gluten, and dairy from my diet completely, 100%. I've been on it for almost four years now. And I'm, I'm proud to say that I have been migraine-free ever since I started the diet. So the first month that I was on it, I still had the drooping and weakness in the right side of my face. But the second month um, that I was on it, the pain and the drooping and the weakness were gone. And, uh, and it has been almost four years now that I, that I have not felt a single migraine headache. And it got me thinking because I had to be so careful with how I ate. I couldn't even have gluten-free mixes that people with like celiacs can have. I couldn't even eat those because a lot of the ingredients they put in there are considered the junk food of the natural health world. So I got really good at reading labels and flipping things over and making sure they didn't have tapioca root and arrowroot powder and rice flour and potato starch. And I couldn't have all of that stuff. Um, it it had to be natural ingredients. You know, if I went and grabbed um, something, it had to have, you know, milk, vanilla, sugar, you know, that kind of stuff. And it. it couldn't have all of these things I couldn't pronounce uh, in it because the chemicals were what punctured the holes in my gut lining in the first place. And so it completely changed the way that I looked at food and how I took care of myself and took care of my body. That's where I began my oils journey was after I had already gotten rid of these migraines. I started thinking to myself, goodness, if bread and sugar and and dairy you did that to me. We're talking a glass of milk, a bowl of ice cream, and a sandwich. Punctured holes in my gut lining by the time I was 32 years old at the point where I was having debilitating migraines. What about the chemicals that I know are in my house? What about my bright blue dish soap? And what about my chemical laundry soap and the stuff that I wipe my counters down with? What about the sprays I spray on my cutting board and three days later I can still smell them on the cutting board? And if I grab that bottle and I read it, it's 
says poison, do not consume. And then I dice my fresh strawberries on there and eat them right off of the right off of the tray because I wanted to disinfect it. What about all of those things? And that is what led me to my quest for essential oils. That was how I ended up in my very first oils class was because I was determined to not end back up in the place where I started. So that was step one. I realized um, that it was time to make some changes. I got invited to my first oils class and got my starter kit and I started right where you are right now, taking this chemical free living thing just one day at a time, kicking one chemical out of my home at a time. You can do this. It's about taking small steps, no more. I'm not going to allow these things in my home. You can't control all of the places that you're exposed, but you are the gatekeeper of your house. So learn alongside our team. Let us guide you through the process in simple, easy steps. Step one is to start with the Young Living Starter Kit. It's a diffuser and 11 bottles of oil. It's the place that I began my oils journey. It's some of the most common oil on the earth for supporting different systems in the body, and they have just one ingredient. Lemon is just cold-pressed lemon rinds. Frankincense is resin, properly steam distilled at the right temperature to make essential oil. Lavender, freshly distilled at the peak of the harvest with thousands of uses in the home. Let us come alongside you and train you how to kick chemicals to the curb. You can do this. Start by heading to youngliving.com, click on become a member, and enter the sponsor and enroller number of the person who gave you this audio CD. And by doing that, you're blessing their family. So thank you. If you're already an oiler and you picked up the CD just to learn a little bit more, it's why I made it. Welcome. I'm glad you're investing in your family. Now, once you put in the sponsor and enroller number online, it's going to take you to a second page to ask for personal information. And that is where you'll set up your account. Write it all down so that you're able to log in later. You want that username written down, your password, your four-digit PIN. The third page asks which starter kit you want, and my personal favorite is the Rainstone Diffuser with the Premium Starter Kit. If your budget's really tight, that home diffuser works wonderfully, too. I'd also encourage you to sign up for Essential Rewards. If you're taking this seriously and you want to kick chemicals to the curb, it's more than just about getting a few oils into your home in a diffuser. It's about a chemical-free lifestyle, and this is step one. Step two is starting to swap some of the chemicals out in your home. The benefit to Essential Rewards is that you get to pick the oils or the products like laundry soap or dish soap that come to your door every single month. You switch things out and you get paid 10% back for everything that you order in new products. That's 10% back on your laundry soap and dish soap and thieves cleaner, uh, which is all that I use to clean my house. It's one of the best choices I ever made. No grocery store ever has paid me to buy my cleaning supplies. If you'd like to add that to your order, I recommend the Thieves Starter Kit for Essential Awards because it contains just about all you need to get rid of nearly every chemical cleaner in your home all in one place. It's simple and it's easy. The final window will ask for payment and then you're off and running. And you can find more resources at oilabilityteam.com. This is something that you need to take seriously. No one is watching your home but you. As I said earlier, you are the gatekeeper, and I would be willing to bet my life that there are things in your home right now that you're exposed to every single day that could be killing you. And the thing is, it's totally preventable. So where do you start? Start small. Start slow. Start with what you're convicted on. Let me give you a very simple tip based on my personal story. With your food, flip the labels over and start reading the ingredients. And if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. It doesn't mean you can't have ice cream. Just go for ice cream with milk and sugar and eggs and vanilla instead of a list of ingredients of 35 items that you can't pronounce. With your home, start with the biggest offenders first. Your laundry soap, your dishwasher soap, your cleaning supplies, your candles and plug Go home, toss the candles and plug-ins in the garbage, and swap it out with the diffuser that's coming in the mail with that premium starter kit and a pure essential oil. It's just a better choice. Young Living has oil-infused thieves cleaner, laundry soap, and dish soap. It's affordable. It's simple to use. Add it to your essential rewards order once you have that starter kit in your hands. This is about small, simple baby steps. Take it one month at a time and slowly start to swap some of this stuff out. Maybe the first month you focus solely on thieves cleaner and you toss your 409 and your bleach and your Windex and your Pine Sol, you can start that simply by just adding a $22 bottle of Thieves Cleaner to your order. Go home and wipe down your kitchen and fall in love knowing that you just boost your immune system instead of taxing your liver. The next month, swap out some laundry soap or some dish soap. For month three, focus on your personal care products, deodorant, shampoo. On month four, focus on beauty supplies like face wash. Every day you leave your makeup on, your skin ages by seven days. Use a chemical-free option to get it off. 
off the Art Gentle Cleansers, my favorite face wash. I started this journey myself two years ago with a Young Living Starter Kit, and I have never looked back. We use the oils every single day in our home. Every oil you use is a chemical you're not using. You matter. Your family matters. Your friends matter. And you can take control of your own health. You don't have to feel the way that you do. You don't have to feel tired and groggy and swollen and exhausted. Kick the chemicals out of your life and start living clean. 